What up, everybody? Soul DXV, we're in here. Hey, man. Your girl, Miss Info, back on the mic. It's been a while. How long has it been since you've done one of these? Since I popped out that 10 pound kid. Last time you rocked the mic. <laughs> Yo, um, that was four and a half years ago. Your girl, Miss Info, left the radio because I didn't own a radio anymore. <clears throat> no shots. Well, well, well. <laughs> but um, it feels really good to be back on the mic, especially surrounded by like my bestest, bestest <gasps> friends. Um, the only people that I could literally drag out of a hotel room, jet lagged, it, with like 20 minutes notice. Um, we're all here, Soul DXB, in Dubai. Some of us for the first time. My man, Max Glazer, first timer. First in, time. Um, but repping dance hall to the fullest. For this, the, the entire theme of this year is your shit. Yeah, so. it's dance hall and reggae in Jamaica. And so um, these guys reached out to me a long time ago. I've been talking to them for about a year about this, kind of like in the formative stages. Yeah. So, um, And in, even at that stage, it was just kind of like providing some guidance and advice. So I didn't even really know at that point that I was going to make it out here. Yeah. Um, but I had been hearing about it for years. And From who? Like, that's the thing. The gatekeepers are very key. Mm. Well, and I don't think I even heard about it directly from Clark, but just knowing Clark, I knew that he had been out here and had seen the movements, okay. and also that Stretch and Bob had been out here, and that there was just a lot of New York activity going on out here for years, so it had been bubbling, and actually, um, some artist friends of mine, um, Evan Heath, who's a great artist, uh -huh. um, and I guess Vicky Toback, who just popped her head in here and popped yep. it out, had been here last year, I think. Yeah, okay. Vicky um, was here last Vicky year. Vicky was here last year, so it had kind of been a swirl of people. Um, and, and when Max is, is referring to Clark... He, he yes. means the one, the only, the legendary, the internationally known. Gang, gang, gang. Smartest man, yeah. smartest man in hip hop. Smartest man in hip hop. Wow. That's Seriously, gems. I, I wasn't going to say that. I wasn't going to say that, but maybe I should recognize DJ Clark Kent. <laughs> gems. Peace to the gods and the earth and Christine Sue. <laughs> She's out there, our publicist, our representative, our agent. Um... So we drag Clark out too. He's this, here. This is no drag. Okay. If you ask me, I I'm coming. Because like, there's like twenty plus years of friendship. Real shit. Yeah, like from baby baby days. Yes. Um, from, from infantry. And then and then on my other infantry. side <laughs> is Joseph Patel, who I dragged in here, my fellow journalist. King Joseph. Okay. Didn't, but now turned movie maker. Didn't drag. Okay. I, 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 I will agree with Clark. But um, who, was the, who was the gatekeeper for you, like telling you, oh, Soul DXB, is that, is that truth? We need to come out here. Uh, I worked with Vicky Toback on Contact High, her Contact High project, and she came out last year and introduced me to the guys at Soul. If anybody doesn't know what Contact High is, it's basically there was a treasure trove of incredible images on these contact sheets that are just thrown away from epic photo shoots um, back when photos were taken on film. And she dug them up and, and found like, yo, you saw that one photo of Nas in the background of a photo of Hove and Biggie? Crazy. Crazy. Blew my mind. It was like looking at a Zapruder tape or something that's like that. Like, it's when Brat was friendly. No, and, peop and people, and there was, people were questioning the validity of the photo, like a Zapruder tape. Really? It, yeah, there yeah. was definite Photoshop, like serious Photoshop arguments about that being real or not. It was wow. Nas, Tupac, and Biggie. Oh, Nas, Nas Tupac, Tupac, and okay. Biggie. Because it was the famous Biggie and Tupac picture. Yeah, and in the contact sheet, Nas, pre-Illmatic Nas is there. Also on that so contact sheet. he's like 16 sheet, years old or something. He's, he's like, I think 17, yeah, 16, wow. 17. Uh -huh. And he's wearing a biohazard T-shirt. And they didn't <laughs> discover Nas in the contact sheet until Vicky went to the photographer, Al Pereira, and said, can I look at your contact sheets from that night? Also on the contact sheet is Clark. <laughs> because the photographer went earlier in that evening. Clark, tell the story. Um, Do you even remember that? Do 100%. Remember? Because I... Uh, the New Music Seminar had given up on a DJ battle, and I worked with them on a DJ battle every year. Okay. So this year, the years that they gave up on it, I owned it and produced it and, and sponsored it. And, yeah, those photos were taken right during New Music Seminar time. And I had the event that it was shot at. Wow. I, no, not the actual event it was shot at, but right after. I mean, 
okay, so that's one moment that just happened to be caught on on film, and then and that just shows that all the nice MCs get around me at some point. Oh, I forget it. I'm sorry. Wow! <laughs> just take credit for it all. No, I'm not. Gonna you brought do that. them all together. You also discovered them. No, 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 no. I didn't. I didn't discover them. I knew about Biggie before. I knew about Nas before. Yeah. I really wasn't like the Uber fan of Pac. I respected him, but I, I wasn't like the Uber fan. Remember when that was literally the most controversial thing that you could possibly say? Well, well, to me, I remember those days, you, like you know especially what? on Hot 97. Like you literally couldn't take a position. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: if you can't take a position, then that means you can't have your actual own feelings. And I will never let anybody guide my feelings. Did I respect him? Did I think there was some records that was incredible? Absolutely. But I didn't think he was a great MC. I thought he was an unbelievable rapper. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He rapped so good, you believed everything he said. I thought he was an unbelievable actor. Like that too. He portrayal, was character. He was definitely acting. Portrayal. <laughs> right? And, and no shots. I'm like, no he was shot. definitely an actor. Like, but, you know. Entertainer. Right. And if you knew him, you knew that. It was it was it was just rap. What's interesting too is like when we talk about opinions. This might go somewhere. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna try to make opinions. sure opinions. I'm gonna I'll swerve it into a, a, a kinder, uh. gentler um, direction. But in general, when we think about having an opinion, right now we're in a day and age where you have a wild ass, unpopular opinion just for the attention. No. Nah. Just as like. Yeah because of the reaction that you want to get. Mm -hmm. You don't actually own that position. You don't really care about it. And you backpedal all the time. All the time. And but no one cares if you're inconsistent. Like you No, could, it, no it doesn't matter. Just the have, having a con saying something controversial or having a controversial opinion, whether you change it or that's the like that's the business. Yeah. That's the, the generation of the excitement and, and a lot of people's business. But what does that do to like our taste, like our taste. Do we have any taste? Like, do you have taste right now in 2019, or are you judging everything on like a facade? I think people who live through a real period are still walking around with taste, because. But the only believe, thing they I, like is the old shit. That's bullshit. Because I love YB and Cordae. Okay. I think he's dope. I think Young Thug is dope. I think Migos are dope. I think um, Kendrick is dope. I think J Cole is. One of the best MCs I've heard in the last 10 years. A few I, of the names that you just mentioned are ones that I also think you probably gravitate towards because they remind you of artists. Young Thug don't remind me of nobody. And nothing. Yeah. And Migos okay. don't remind me of nobody. I think Migos may be the, the modern day run DMC, okay. but I don't think Cordae, they remind then? me of it. Why be, why be Cordae just can Cole? rap? Cole? Cole? Cole is a dope rapper. Okay. Sorry, I apologize. Cole is a dope MC. It's like super dope MC mm -hmm. who happens to be a great rapper and a great producer and makes great records. You like these new artists. Do you listen to them as much or do you? Yeah. Okay. You know why? Because I want my like for them to be valid. I don't just like somebody for five minutes. I, I like them and I want to continue to like them. So I'm I, I, like, if, if I sit here and said, I love the Griselda crew. Which uh, I do that, wait, that wait, wait. album. It, but listen, listen to what I'm saying. If I say I like the Griselda crew, like people right now who are just getting on Griselda will be like, oh yeah, I get it. But it, I'm on their EPK, their first uh, EPK. I didn't know that. I'm on it talking about how crazy they are. Like, I mean, so that means I really do the science. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm really like, no, I listen. I've heard of them. Like when they were only in Buffalo, I was like, yo, there's some kids in Buffalo who are. Hmm. And people were looking at me going, Buffalo? I'm like, Buffalo? How did that happen? So what do you think is the difference that makes them not just some kids I heard in Buffalo? They to... got bars, yo. Bars. Yeah, that makes the so difference. there's so many kids out there. They so many bars and so many. Who sounds like them? That's, that's the key. That's what makes a star when no one sounds like you. That's Joseph, why the guy. Who, who, how would you how would you describe? So also I'm for our listeners, they might not know. They might not even be up on Griselda. I don't, I'm not really sure. So I'm how would you how would you describe that crew? You, you know what? Let me apologize. Before I say Griselda, I want to say West Side Gun, Conway, and Benny the Butcher, so that they can put some context to who we're talking about. Yep. Right. I think they. For me, they live in a world where people still sample records, and they live in a world where where lyrics still mean something, storytelling still means something. They're not just rapping to rap. 
which I see a lot of, which is fine. But I, you, they say great filmmakers make films that they create a world that you can step inside, and every little detail of that world has been has been determined. Mm-hmm. Griselda is like that for me. You okay. step into that world, and you know you can see and feel that world that they occupy. Do they blow up? Do they become? Mainstream? Do they become? I don't even know. Like, what is? It's not up to What them. is the path of blowing up as a as a hip hop artist now? It's the same path that was before. Make great great well, it's records. It's not getting on radio. You know, the thing is, radio doesn't control things anymore. Great records control things. Right. And so that's what, what controls things. What is the path to knowing that you made it? Right. When you made when you got your single on the radio. There's that, Stretch that, Armstrong. That means you got your single on the radio. When you got your single on. <laughs> <laughs> on Stretch and Bob, then you knew that you were on a path. Now, what? What? There's like you. You get discovered. You make something, and then what? You are on Fallon. Like what? I don't understand. No, you're selling out shows without having records on the radio. Okay. You're you're being recognized. And then for you your, get booked on Coachella. Yeah, and you then, can. You can. You can, or you can't. Coachella's like. Making a pop record now. Exactly. Coming I mean, Beyonce's on Coachella, like right. that. That but I mean, kind of. There's so many. There, I, I think the point is there's so many paths. There, right. There's a, almost infinite paths to that of there's, whether it's like you're someone who gets a zillion plays on SoundCloud, you're right. someone who gets booked on Coachella, and all of those things are can be different. They also happen so quickly now that it almost doesn't mean anything, and there's no. It, it's I don't see. I'm tired of someone before they've even been around for... Like, <laughs> I'm literally tired of them already, and... Let's play some West Side Gun. Okay. All right. That's a good That's a good way to, to just actually prove what we're talking Let's about. Let's go. Ready? Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Good. Ready? All right. As if, as if there's not 800 years of radio experience in this room, <laughs> and we still can't figure out how to do it. <laughs> Yo, but I would have <laughs> such dead air. <laughs> and I did, like, a late night shift... For, for a while. No one would even note it. Like, you wouldn't even get a call, probably, no, right? No, and then Overnight. Case Lay would be, like, with, with some chicks in the green room, and it was just it would just get wild. <laughs> and then Joe Budden would be asleep underneath the console. Um, <laughs> it, was a, it was a wild, wild time. I mean, not any wilder than what you guys have seen, I'm sure. Yeah, that don't matter. Max is pretty wild. Pretty crazy. Max, crazy, pretty crazy, crazy guy. <laughs> Wait, uh, before we get sucked into because one one thing I wanted to bring up was I saw this article there's a new magazine I think it's called Level Jermaine Hall is doing a new magazine Jermaine Hall from Vibe from BET um, I, I think he was at XXL with Daytuan and them too but Jermaine man you know it's all of us we just move around but this one is about men of a certain age in hip hop I think I think that's like the tagline and the, Why are the you article, looking at us like that? I know, I know, I know. I mean, no, I don't want to. I'm the oldest want, in the room. I'm comfortable with that. Touchy, but you know, Hope I'm just fresh turned at fifty. It. Hope turned fifty and right. made it look light. And I was just talking to Raekwon at the at the hotel at breakfast, and he was saying that next month he's going to turn fifty. Also, yes, he is. And yo, the article is about like how to how does one age gracefully in hip hop, and we've seen it go not so great. But I feel like now, dudes is really getting their their flow, and they're able to do it in a way that, yeah, you know, they're untouchable. If I believe that if you were an architect in the best times of rap or the best times of hip hop, then aging shouldn't be an issue. If you are an architect in the best times, so Nas is never gonna be not recognized as one of the amazings, and they're not gonna look at him like he's a clown. Okay. And the thing is, they they didn't just they didn't just complete their lives based off of records. Yeah. It was what are you gonna do if the records don't work, or what are you gonna do besides the records working? So yeah. because it still looks right, and because they can still dictate the way a kid wants to dress or the way a kid wants to rap, and then because they are still these young boys, um, superheroes, they're gonna grow up gracefully. I think that's the key. Is that they are able to, number one, diversify mm-hmm. so they can get money in many, mm-hmm. many different ways. And it's now like an accomplishment. 
But I, I right? Think like, it's not like a... The same way that before, it's not female artists used to have to hide having kids. Right. right? That was some... If you got knocked up, you got you to gotta go sit down for a little while. Now, it's like, it's a marketing plan, right? <laughs> it's a whole thing. It's opening you, you up to all of these different new avenues. And I think, like, for the male superheroes of our culture... It is like an accomplishment. Like, wow, I, I I look up to you. You you did it. You survived. You thrived. But um, okay, let's look at the landscape of hip hop. Yeah. The ones who were killing it in the '80s weren't looking back at the young boys, going, "This is how you do it." You started killing it in the '90s. You were trying to think of it like, "Let me help the next guy so he understands how to do it." Hmm. So because they did that, they get carried a certain way. I you know see, what I'm saying? Okay. Like, even though, if if you talk to Jay Z and you talk about his 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 uh his 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 years before him, he's gonna go Grandmaster Kaz, uh, Big Daddy Kane, Coogee Rap, people like that. He's gonna look at those guys and go, yeah, that's that. But they didn't get carried right, that right, way. Right. There was Plus, no connect. There was a disconnect. But so his generation is like the first that's able to look back and see. I I need to. Do something and, and I also become made something this more guy, solid this guy, than this that. guy, and this guy. Think, think about this. There's people. There are young rappers who make records who are big, who are doing things, who can't tell you five Run DMC records, mm. right? But if you ask them, give me five Biggie records, they'll mm-hmm. give you five Biggie records. And the reason why, even if they didn't love them, if they didn't like them, Biggie, Tupac, Jay, and Nas, they'll be able to tell you something about them. Even if there's no comparison with them to them, they knew what built their futures. They'll tell you all of 50's records. They'll tell you all of Wu-Tang records. Why? Because they know who built their future. They, they, they didn't know Okay, that there so was a Run DMC. We knew, so we can speak on it in a certain way. They didn't know, but that's because Run DMC didn't go, I'm going to carry the future. Okay, to, just to be argumentative, is that really because the people, the guys did you know something good? Or is that just a byproduct of technology? Like no, the connection no, I, I between think an old I, song and a new song is no. literally one click. I think, as it, opposed I, to, I think it's a byproduct of people not... Un- okay, hip hop is a culture that didn't cultivate itself. Okay. You get it? Like, if if a if a, a brand new Jewish child gets born, no, 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 <laughs> no, I, 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 no. I just I just okay. want to be able to explain the problem. If a brand I'm new if you. a brand new Jewish child gets born, <laughs> I have this, one. Who's the old ass baby this? <laughs> but, <laughs> as opposed to a fifty year old uh, baby Yoda. But what, what I'm saying is. When a new, when a, a a child gets born being Jewish or being new. or being Muslim, uh-huh. not, or being Muslim or being of a certain culture, that culture is inbred into him more than anything else. So the most important thing for a Jewish kid is his culture. Money's fine, but it comes after his culture. Uh-huh. Islam, it cultures uh-huh. the culture is the most important part. Yes, we can do all kinds of other things, but if you aren't about yourself or about what you come from. It's and a it's bigger of than you as it's an individual. It's way yeah. bigger than okay. you. Hip hop didn't cultivate hip hop. So when, when, when it's getting older, nobody goes. We're here because of Run DMC, Africa Bambada. No one keeps. No one keeps continuing that story. So the older guys, mm. and trust me, I'm one of them older guys. They get mad, and then they're going, "We're not being represented properly." The fact that hip hop doesn't have a union for rappers properly. Right. There's a union, but they don't know that there's a union for you guys who are rappers. So like, it, it does. It shouldn't even make sense that Cool Herc isn't a multimillionaire if you think about it properly. Hmm. He gave everyone here our jobs. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the culture birth you. You know what I'm saying? The culture of hip hop birth you. The culture of birth of hip hop birth damn near everybody who is at Soul DXB. The culture doesn't go, I posed this once on Instagram, I mean on Twitter. I said, if every single person who ever heard a hip hop record donates $1 to Cool Herc, he can live forever for the rest of his life and not have to wake up and go somewhere every day. Right. But imagine, they actually, dis- he deserves it. Right. Because he set everybody up. Africa Bambada set everybody up. The, the thing that we did in the parks for free set everybody up 
I play records for a living. I play records How for a living. How do you get people to care about something that ha- they they the, literally think there's no there's the, no backwards the, he, gratitude? He, he, that and the reason why, work that way. but the like, reason why is because the culture didn't cultivate itself. So now, are there any cultures the, that the, the, cultivate a, a backwards gratitude? Yeah, rock and roll. I mean, I mean, rock and roll music, rock and roll artists. If you ask a brand new rock and roll artist, give me three songs by Aerosmith, they'll tell you the drummer on every one of those songs. Mm. <laughs> you know why? Because they care about the thing. They do. You know what's the oldest sounding shit in the world? Is when someone says, you should really care about the, found- <laughs> the foundation and do something to help them. Like, okay. that literally makes you feel like everyone just closes. They it's don't- true. It's a hundred percent true. Sound super old. But no one. It's like so hard to get people to even. Like the one thing that really blows my mind is that I literally spent my entire life with no constant mirror. And anyone that is, you know, born in the '90s on up, has lived their entire lives with a reflection and a feedback loop of themselves all the time like think about how that puts changes your mind state and how you cannot even think about paying homage to somebody that came 15 years before you just keep walking by a mirror like hey let me look at myself yeah or looking at your likes and your follow count and well I guess I'm very glad that I didn't come up in that time I am too I I didn't because I I, would not have survived that I will never forget the most important things to me That, that the reasons I'm here is because of people before me right you know what i'm saying and that's the reason why every time i meet a new dj when they want to have a conversation i'm giving him a full conversation so that he can go walk away and go yo clock really spoke to me about this thing i want to do and he got something from it instead of yeah man good luck Nah, because right. that's what rappers were doing back in the days because their chip on their shoulder was saying yeah good luck because i'm out trying to get this paper because hip-hop the the thing that that changed everything was how much money was being made in rap. So once that happened, rappers were like, I want all the money. I'm not going to share this with anyone. So you didn't cultivate it. Mm. Think about it. Like, I'm, I, I'm not trying to make everyone here look way back. But in the 80s, if there was a rap group and you went to a show and that rap group was performing, 10 other rap groups were performing and then you all were friends. Right. You know, just because you performed at the same show, you j- you made calls to each other, you checked each other out. Why was Hood on 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 on, on the scenario? Because yeah. it was they man's. You know what I'm saying? Why did these things happen? Because they actually cared. They didn't necessarily really care that you made money. They cared that oh you do this too. Oh come on. Mm. Now it's like that was up. that was enough of a connection. It was like right. oh you rap through the same way. You're yeah. like oh you're a DJ. Let yeah. me talk to you and learn about. This. I mean, Lars Professor had the wherewithal to put Nas, Akinelli, Joe Fatal on one record. Mm-hmm. Uh, that posse record gave Nas a career. Did somebody give you a career? Like, did some DJ say, put you under their wing and no. say, like... No, well, my you... uncle. My okay. uncle did. But he wasn't a DJ. He just had a sound system, and he said, you can play it. Right. But at some point, I got a, I got a um, primetime spot in a club. And that I would have to say... That's that's Red Alert. And I always say, I love Red Alert. Right. Like, I would do anything for Red Alert. Whether he knows or he doesn't know, if he asks me or something gets asked of me for Red Alert, it's getting done because he gave me a 1 o'clock spot in the biggest club in the world at that time. And also probably because you deserved it and you were good. Maybe so. So, so that, the, the I, other part of it is, like, the lesson is yeah, be resilient your, and deserve your perfect shit. Perfect your goddamn craft. But, I mean, think about this. This is Soul DXB. We're in a country that's maybe 30 years old. I'm 53, and I'm a headliner DJ at Soul DXB. Uh, unbelievable. Wait. Okay. First yeah, off, I think we should play another you know, song because Joseph has gems on his iPhone. Not that I want to put a target on your back. I feel like I should only play old rap now. Nah. Can you <laughs> no, play old, you should but can only you play, play old? Brand new rap. You should only play dope rap. I'm okay, play yeah. Dope rap. Only, only, only Actually, I'm going to play something different. That's my path. I got to play. Yo, let's go. All right. We back up. Yo, we back up. Pause, pause. Check, we check, back check, up? check, check. Peace to Magdy. Oh. Size 13, bro. Yo, <laughs> really? What? Even on my radio show, you're just Sorry. getting your, <laughs> your no, you free see, You see that guy right there? And your swag? 
You see yes, that guy I right see there? Him. He's got glasses on. Yeah, the tall guy right yeah, there, tall, right? Yeah, tall. Yep, he, and a beard. He's, he's one of my better friends, and he has one of the, the best collection mm -hmm. of original sneakers, um, sneakers that, that, that people would... He's kill, a collector kill, or he's a retailer? He's, he's, he's a both. designer? He, he's, he's a collector slash store owner slash... Name his name. What's the he's name? He's an archivist. Archivist. Ar Can archivist. I say archi archivist? Archivist. Archivist. I don't he's, care about that. I'm saying I'm, what you do is you archive shoes. And um, his name is Magdi. He's one of my best friends also. Uh -huh. But, um, like, he, he has something going on here at, at uh, Soul DXB that is insane. Like, what is it? He archived a bunch of shoes and brought them here. It's like a little mini museum of... Oh, like, ADNA? Yeah, ADNA. But the oh, thing is, I'm, like, there's shoes fan. in there that are easily $100,000 $100, a pop. Yes. That is the most expensive trailer at Soul. Right. Yeah. Yes, and like I will easily. also also say the the best part of it is not. I I'm sure that for some folks, they're just looking at the shoe and the value and whatever. But the stories, yeah, are incredible. Um, I guess one of the people who is also working um, with him, Gerard, yeah, has been telling me about like just. You know, the shoe that was a one time, you know, it was only made for Michael Jordan. And what blew my mind, and I never knew this, I don't know whether this is general information, but apparently Jordan didn't wear he wore two mids different sizes. or high tops. He wore a size in between those two. So they, they made him a special height right. of ankle. And he also wore two different size shoes every game. Was I it 13, 13, and 13, 13, 13 and I just heard that actually on my way out here because there's I a pair that in that thing up. that said one the ones. Is, Yo, I'm yeah. from Chicago and I didn't know all that. That's amazing. So yeah, I love I love the storytellers, the people who care about the, yeah. you know, the little intricate details, um, the way that you know, like we used to read liner notes and all that, but when liner notes existed. Yeah, like is is there any value in lamenting? The extinction of different elements of the culture. I don't necessarily Is believe. there any purpose? M in Minya, that? you sound like you're having an existential I am. crisis. I am right definitely. Now. Like, I mean, th there's in value my in feelings. like we could enjoy having a conversation, like beyond like the us in this room enjoying having a conversation about the things that we miss. Yeah. <laughs> what do you miss? I, I miss liner notes, to be quite honest. <laughs> I read, so does Joseph is furiously nodding his head like, yeah. I miss only specifically Wu-Tang liner notes because there were names, unique nicknames of people that I had never imagined. It was just like all the, all the uh, five percenter names. All, it just gave me like sort of a window into a different world. And I felt like I knew Staten Island. I knew Stapleton just from the liner notes. Like, I knew those people. I knew, knew Big Oogie and, like, <laughs> Blue Heaven Honeymoon Dream and whatever. Mm -hmm. And the artwork, right? And the artwork. And the sure. photos inside. Clark, what do you, what do you miss? Um, just be, just I, think what I, I think what I miss, I'm not, I'm not a grumpy old man. I, <laughs> I am. Um, <laughs> you, you know my problem? I think the reason why I, uh, that I'm not as or as anti what's happening now is because yeah. I actually understand why so clearly because I play for young kids all the time. True. And um, it's not their fault. It's the fault of technology. Technology changed the attention span of people. Techn when, when we were all having our, our moments of it happening, records were six minutes long. Yeah. Now a record's two minutes long. And it's because people don't have the attention span to listen for a six minute record until they totally bought into you. Many right? songs did not need to be six minutes. They might not have, but if a great artist made a six minute song, you were down with it. But you had didn't have a choice. Right, that too. Yeah, but even on the radio, we weren't playing six minutes of any song. But you were playing ever. more than two minutes. True. And in my era, you played a six minute record. Wow. Was you know that what like saying? because there was no commercial? Like, no, no, because you just played the record. The yeah. records got played. You didn't even think of, of you cutting You didn't think of the time. The nah, the time didn't matter until attention spans changed. Before the iPod, the attention span of people was three and a half minutes. Imagine three and a half minutes to keep someone's attention. Mm. Now it's eight seconds. That's why swiping 
happens because if you don't get it in eight seconds you don't like it you didn't even know if you got to like it because you gave it eight seconds right but the attention span is the reason why we're in the state of everything that we're in attention span we're not paying attention so I can't be mad at a kid who does or doesn't like so I, I look at liner notes and I think first of all let's let's compare liner notes to what they really are it's like going to Instagram and reading the actual statement that they wrote instead yeah. of just the picture there are people who will look at a picture of sneakers that I've posted and then say what are those and I'm like, dog, I just told you what they are. You, you didn't read because their attention span says don't read. There goes your friend. Keisha. Oh, hey. All right. The, but, the, but Clark's atten- boss just entered the room, so everybody no. start acting Queen Keisha right. in the house. All right, guys. Act right. Nah, but um, yeah, attention span totally is the reason why the things that we miss, like kids won't ever really care about. First of all, kids really don't necessarily know how to read. Oh, come on. It's true. Oh, my God. I'm not even laughing. Yeah, I'm like, true. I'm dead serious. They really don't know how to read like that. And the ones who Yo, do. No, but they could also program a bot and, 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 and do all types of stuff with their phone that you could never even figure out how to do. Yeah, but that's and that's dots and dashes. That's not a big bunch of reading. Oh, it's a language. But I'm, it's a language, but it's not a bunch of reading. It's a language of symbols and numbers and like if you read a program it makes no sense to you. No, there are people who argue that people shouldn't learn languages because there'll be real time Google Translate in very, very quickly and you won't even need to learn any other languages. So no. you know, and then there's other people on the other side who say that learning different languages actually does something to your brain. It does. So that processes information differently. When when you when Make you <laughs> says listen, Stretch Armstrong. When you learn <laughs> Think about, what about it. about handwriting? They say that handwriting. No, handwriting is hard right is now. Gone. But that's the reason. The reason why is because <laughs> they don't teach. Cursive. They don't teach I cursive do, I anymore. Do not miss. They it. don't teach cursive anymore. They don't. You like don't need it's, Latin. it's crazy. You, but if you learn a language and you learn it the way the way you're supposed to learn yeah. it, you actually will respect the culture that it comes from. If you're learning it through Google Translate, you don't care about the culture. But if you have to understand why well, the, the understanding of it has no value to you because it's just given it's right, just because it's, it's given, given to you, you. It's given but if you, you it's learn it you then it. you'll be able to explain to someone this is the reason why the word is said like this this is the reason why there's a's and this is the reason why there's o's if you learn it but they don't have the time I'm telling you the attention span of humans is what's got us in the place where we are You love to see it that's why we're going to sit here and do this radio show for six hours. <laughs> no, no, actually, no. I, think we, I think we should play another song, but when we come back, I want to really, I I really get into something How much pressing. time do you think we have? I have no idea, but I'm just going to keep, <laughs> keep going. I'm going to get minutes. into something that I really want to know. How, many, how much free shit does Clark Kent get? And what, I mean, why? What, <laughs> what happens to Why all, is that the question? No, because we're in a... This is about streetwear, fashion, and I want to talk about consumption, waste, the industry. You do you need to play a record, or do you just want to <laughs> dive into it? Because it seems like you want to ask the question. Should we play a record first? You we'll got something? Record. We need okay. Super, super. Ill. Check, 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 and we back. So the XB, and you know what? I don't even know where this show is gonna live, but I just. I'm so happy to be sitting here talking to my homies. I think you should do another show. I think they're called podcasts now. No, I think you should do a show so that you can make it feel the way you want it to feel. Pause. I think, look, if if I got the call to come sit down in a room with these people in New York, I would absolutely be there. I would be in there. I've got imposter syndrome right now, so I'm I'm (laughs) just enjoying this moment. No, no, no. First of all, I dragged you in here because the homie Joseph Patel is producing a documentary that I'm so excited about. Um, just real quick, give us the synopsis of this documentary that you're doing with Quest Love. It is on the Harlem Cultural Festival of 1969. Wow. Do you even know what that was? Yes. Max yes, Blazer, it was like Woodstock. You know? I, I know what it is because park. I've read the article right. about the film yeah. that Joseph is Okay, producing. so for the, all the people that have not heard of this because it and blew I, my mind. Sorry, and I grew up in the actual Woodstock. Wow. Wait, really? <laughs> yes. Right near Bearsville. Wow. 
Okay. <laughs> See, Clark knows everything. It's weird. I, yeah, I told it's you. I, 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 that's where. That's did where. I, um, I did not lie when I said where, he's the smartest person. What producers had like a, a compound? It, no producers had a compound. Bearsville is a studio Nas where album. producers went. Okay. I produced like Rick's album there. Um, <laughs> Trackmasters produced Nas album there. Um, Fifty was being produced there. While I was doing Slick Rick's it was album. it was the secret get out of the city, but close track enough. Trackmasters was there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Columbia had had a okay, big base yeah, there. Yeah. But it was the close was close enough to just sneak out of the city, get the right. work done, but you could get back to the city in like two hours. But anyway, I just wanted to throw a Woodstock reference in there. Let's get back to the <laughs> yes. black. Let's get back to Black Woodstock. Black Woodstock. This was Stevie Wonder, Nina Simone, Sly and the Family Stone, Max Roach, Abby Lincoln, Herbie Mann, Roy Ayers. Uh, Mongo Santa Maria all played in Harlem over five weekends that coincided with the actual white Woodstock. <laughs> wow. 300, 000, Just Woodstock. 300,000 people you don't showed call it up. White Woodstock. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, Jimi <laughs> Hendrix did play Woodstock. 300,000 people showed up, no incidents whatsoever, and no one knows about it. And, and some, some guy shot the entire thing on videotape. That's crazy. Which in 69 is very cutting edge technology. Uh-huh. We've, we've acquired the footage um, in the process of digitizing it right now. Questlove is directing, he's making his directorial debut. And we're gonna tell the story of Harlem in 1969. I cannot wait. We're opening the film with a six minute Stevie Wonder drum solo. <laughs> which is insane, because I mean. he's nice on the drums. <laughs> And maybe that's also like a, a litmus test. If you can pay attention to six minutes <laughs> no, of Stevie Wonder, you then earn, you deserve the movie. You have to earn the rest of the film. <laughs> Literally. Like, it should just shut off. If they see you, it, it, it can detect whether your eyes leave and go to your phone. S- speaking of <laughs> using should... technology for good. <laughs> totally. That's incredible. <laughs> um, so congratulations, Joseph, on that. Thank you. Um, I feel like we could sit here and talk forever, but I don't know what, what, where would we do a radio show. If you decided you wanted to do a radio show, every single radio station would say yes. That's very I don't know, kind. Just, I don't know. Just speaking for Clark and I, I, we, I think we would vote for Canarsie. And <laughs> have, have, have the base. Just to bring it back to Brooklyn. Bring it like to Brooklyn. pirate. Just do it. Like Put up like a yeah, pole. I guarantee you Clark still has a basement we can use in Canarsie. My basement is full of kid toys. Yeah. But... <laughs> Clark has a basement in Canarsie full of records Yo, somewhere. Just talking about rap moms and dads would be a, an incredible <laughs> radio show. Especially because you are a rap, rap mom. Rap mom all day. All day. Like, murder, murder, murder. I, I remember my, the, <laughs> dragging my newborn son to the Fool's Gold day off. That's crazy. With headphones on, you know, to block the, <laughs> the noise. Because we're I, also responsible adults. Yeah, very responsible. Yes, yes. And I, I think his first celebrity introduction was with ASAP Ferg. I'm very happy with that. I think you, that's you know, a great think about point. the fact that, you know, you jokingly said you're very responsible parents, but that's extremely responsible to make them aware of the thing that you are a part of that way. 100%. I used to take my son to record companies that I worked at. Like, Puff Daddy can say he saw my son when he was one year old. Like, yep. Jay-Z. Like, and Though he might not remember, these are things that if you don't do, if you don't cultivate them mm-hmm. properly, they won't know, and it'll go away. I mean, if anything, it identifies you as a certain type of person. Right. Right? It identifies you as that type of human that is really invested in being a dad. Yeah. And being, and that also reflects on you being a role model and a mentor. Um and an archivist. Yeah. I don't want someone else to teach my kid about the things that I know about. Or, or love. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. I don't, yeah. And, 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 it, and it doesn't have to be your own, you know, biological kid, but like just the kids. Yeah. The kids, period. The kids. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> um, some of them grown ass babies, not all <laughs> new, young Jewish yeah, you're babies. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was young. saying? <laughs> <laughs> You, if 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 you don't cultivate it, then it'll go away. So uh. that's the reason why I am the way that I am about meeting new rappers. I, I don't meet new rappers with the damn you can't really rap. I meet new rappers with what are you gonna do with the future of this 
this responsibility that you have. Sometimes the questions mess them up, but it makes them actually give a damn. And then the conversations. And the reason why they will stop and have a conversation with me mm -hmm. about that type of stuff is because I didn't go away. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though I'm 53, I'm, I am old enough to be all amigos father. But when they see me, it's that guy just produced a record last year that was a big record. So mm. that I don't go away to them. That guy made a sneaker that I really wish I had. I don't go away. And if you, but you also, but you also treat and have always treated the younger generation with respect and yeah. care and interest for what they're doing. That's because like a genuine interest and love for what they're doing. That's because it didn't treat us that way when we were young. Hmm. So you're repairing it by doing doing what you wished had been done to you. For sure. I mean, but very, that, yeah, I mean, but I, it's proven for me, you know what I'm saying? Because I created Superman crew of DJs so that I could make sure this group of DJs cared and did the right thing moving forward so that they could build and turn to someone else and go, come on, I'm going to take care of you, too. Yeah. Because if you have somewhat of a platform, any platform, you have to help somebody with the platform somehow. I'm not. You have to understand, I play records. I'm not saving saving lives. So if I have something positive Arguable, that I can but, do, right. but if, I have, if there's something positive I can do, then you should do. I think that the key to you being able to have that mindset and the key to, I think, all of us being able to have the certain mindset that we have, where we can joke about being grumpy-ass old men and women, is the fact that you also had a full life that had different facets to it. And I think that one of the most dangerous things is for someone in the business or who loves music or loves any aspect of the culture, whether it's sneakers or whatever, to just only know that and not necessarily cultivate a personal life, cultivate a family. Or for the fact that like we've all known each other for all of, for all of these years. Cultivate friendships. Yeah. And, like, and, I, and I can sit here and we were saying it off the mic and like to Clark and Stretch, like people that I... Uh, grew up listening to uh, you know like that were far away like hearing them through a radio right and can like have been friends with them for 20 years and no no you since um the gold tooth and and the motor and, 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 and on a motorbike the, and the outside of the, outside of the club <laughs> oh, no. i love that it's my favorite thing <laughs> yeah go on. Um, no but you know what i mean and and so like so having th having that part of it having grown out of um of music of this like one you know crazy focus and kind of like love that everybody shares yeah it's a it's about definitely um knowing that there's more out there and finding it and experiencing different things so that you value the culture right now mm -hmm. we now we refer it capital t capital c the culture um hmm. and, and 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 bring something new to it but if you don't if you if all you did like anybody that was only a DJ and never saw anything else and when they traveled never actually saw the city that they were traveling in because all they cared about was their gig and then getting back to the hotel room whatever you have nothing left to offer and then you're angry and bitter because you feel insecure about that and you ch and your checks are getting shorter and your options are getting smaller and, and, the, it's like, and the thing isn't giving anything back to you yeah. Because you didn't... What do you have? You you got yeah. small ends. We just did a right. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> no. What are we calling this got, podcast? And you got, and you got no, no uh, exclusives, unreleased exclusives on your iPhone like Joseph Patel. What are, got, what are we calling this podcast? Um, I have no... What is what is this podcast? Info. It's stre stretch in the Corner. That's nah, what it is. this stretch is called in Info. Info. <laughs> just call it Info. <laughs> Well, uh, Stretch probably has the hookups because he has like, he's like on all the fancy radio networks with his podcast. What? Yeah. He's, he's on NPR. <laughs> it's called, it's called iTunes. It's called uh, Stitcher. It's called I Figured It Out. Right. It's called. <laughs> oh, that's what y'all are doing? Oh, okay, cool. Um, all right, now I know that we probably don't have that much time left, but I did want to get into. Are this we allowed? No, we're zone. done. Really? We're done. Don we're Lentz done. is in the building, waiting to get inside. Oh, oh where's okay, Don Lentz? He's right here. He's right outside. Three. What was that? Where? I this was going until three. I thought it was going until two thirty. Let's go. We'll go. All right, well, we'll, we'll talk until we, we see want. him at the door. All right, well, it, I actually have to go interview Damn. Lee Scratch Perry. Oh, all right. You should do that. Respect. Good Respect. luck. I, I, and actually, I, interview is the wrong word. 
speak to. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I, I'm hoping to just let him talk and see what happens. That so. probably will happen. I mean, you just he you are merely a witness, okay? Yes. And and he is the vessel. And oh yeah, it says two thirty for you. Yeah. Listen, I did so I did this interview t- yesterday with Lee for twenty minutes, and it, and Max it has to do it for an hour today. I think I might have I have forty five or an hour. Yeah, so. yeah, in front of people, which is gonna be <laughs> insane. So you just have just let it flow, let it flow all over you, but just over your body. Pause. But <laughs> the, the good part about him doing it is, is that he understands from whence it is. Like he can ask real questions that. The, the average kid who likes uh, Lee, Lee Perry. There's huh? no questions. Yeah, yeah, there's you really. There's no can't, questions. You, can't, you, you, can't. Were, you were just providing a, a platform. Tomorrow I get to do that because I get to actually sit where, where Ming is sitting and I have protege and coffee on, oh, nice. on a radio show that I'm doing tomorrow. Just right to here on Soul radio DSV, show yep. On our <laughs> other radio show. Oh, and Because that's what you do that, when you're on the radio. Promo, oh. yeah, self-promote. <laughs> Stretch and Bob are going to be on at... 4.30. Today. That's actually the headliner of this entire room. <laughs> the headliner. Gang, gang. Well, they're on. Five years running. Well, they're on NPR, after all. Exactly. Oh, that is WNYC, right? Free agents. Oh, wait. Can you say who? Uh, That's a no. <laughs> well, I think he, he's going to say at 4.30. He's gonna, <laughs> oh, he's going to save gonna it. He's going to leave all the information <laughs> at 4.30. Wow. Yeah, you're going to take that? He's going to save it for his own I show. I don't even get I an respect exclusive. that. I don't get a drop, a, a, th- a new... Are, are you and Stretch moving to Dubai? Are, and you and Bob? I have multiple personalities. <laughs> are, are Adrian and Stretch moving to Dubai? We, uh, we, have, a, we have a home here, but we only come here on the first week of December. <laughs> and honestly, before we go, I just want to shout out Stretch and Bob because it's really their names that a lot of us are coming here for. Like, if it wasn't name dropping Stretch and Bob, I, I don't know if I'm. You automatically know, you would, you would know how official it was yeah but them being here that means it's official it's it's not only official but it's going to be something like Too with long. gravitas I hope, I hope it out. that should actually be, <laughs> that should actually be the name of your podcast gravitas, gravitas. yeah it sounds very um that's like a 20 dollar word um Thank you, everybody in the, in the room. We're going to make way for the one and only Don Letts. And um, shout out to everybody out here in Dubai. Um, come check Seoul. me out. I'll be across literally 20 feet away at the Farfetch Stadium Goods uh, Mini Mart. It's, it's looking extra lit in there. Got Yeezys on tap. <laughs> Clark. None, none free for Clark Kent, though, because we know he gets enough free shit. And, uh, yeah, check us all out. Um, Max? Um, I'll be DJing this evening after the performances, after the show, uh, in Yam and Scram Lounge. Um, that is myself, Shortcut, and Chromatic Live from Jamaica. So nice. tonight is Dance Hall After Party over there. And then I believe tomorrow at 2 p.m., back here on the radio with Protégé, Leela Ike, Savannah, and Coffee. Wow. Clark? Yeah. Um, me and my brother Stretch Armstrong will be headlining the closing party, and we Ooh. will shut shit down. Shut Where's that at? Um, the Nyaman Scram Lounge, and it's going to be craziness. Who's performing? Me and Stretch. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. it that that's that's, that's, that's it. all you need. Yeah, I know. we we do the closing party every year now. And um, Joseph, you have an exhibit that's very close by as well. Vicky Toback and I have contact hot visualizing reggae. Thirty years of reggae photography. Every print is for sale. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. And yeah, shout out to Jeanette Beckman. Shout out to Jeanette Beckman, Marte Corley. Yep. <laughs> Cool. Thanks, Thank man, you yeah. guys so much for getting out of your peace to the gods and the earths. Yeah. Love Thank y'all. You. Let's do it again. New York City.